Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about how to deal with disrespect in marriage. One year into their 18-year marriage, my guest Gabby already wanted a divorce. Her husband was always cranky and blamed her for being a bad parent of their five kids, even though he was the one abusing alcohol. He lied, he flirted with female co-workers, he didn't get along with her family and made her feel like she wanted to die. But today, her marriage is exactly what she dreamed about, and she has no doubt that her husband loves her and wants to be her hero. She's going to share her secrets for creating your own loving story, even if your relationship seems hopeless. And then I'll be giving out the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award, which is meant to help you have an honest relationship by criticizing your partner. Huh? I'll explain. All of that is coming up. But first, let's talk about how to deal with disrespect in marriage and turn his rudeness into respect in four simple steps. If your husband criticizes you, it hurts. You're doing so much, yet somehow it's not enough. No matter how hard you try, your parenting, your housekeeping, or your work, just don't measure up. Or so he would have you think. Or maybe he tries to control how you do things like correct grocery shopping or underwear rotation. Worse, he speaks to you like he wouldn't even speak to a dog, yelling, swearing, or calling you names. Having such a verbally abusive husband is devastating. And some would say it's a big, bright red flag. Maybe he just keeps getting annoyed with you for no apparent reason at all, making you feel like a supreme irritant who's worthless and totally unattractive. That's such a lonely place to be. The good news is that if you're seeing any of those troubling signs of a disrespectful husband, there is still hope for fixing your marriage. Here are four counterintuitive secrets for dealing with disrespect in relationships that you can get the respect you deserve. Step number one, change the dance. If you have no power to prevent your partner from being verbally disrespectful or exploding on you, what choice does that leave but divorce or continuing to be a victim, right? There's no third way. But what if there is? As a woman, you are the keeper of the relationship. That means you have the power to set the ground rules for respect, but maybe not in the way that you think. Your man's filter could be very different from yours or seemingly non-existent. He may not even realize that his words hurt you. Fortunately, you can teach him how to treat you better in a hurry. When he says something hurtful, say ouch and leave the room. He might not like it at first. He might not like it at all. He may say, ouch, what's ouch? He could make a weird face. In my experience, that's a good thing. He's acknowledging that you're changing the dance and chances are it's an old dance and it's courageous of you to do new dance steps yourself. I took perverse pleasure from watching my husband squirm when I changed up my dance steps. It's also because I know what happens when a wife continues the new dance steps. What happened for me is that 99% of the hurt is gone. There's no more choosing my battles. The battle days are over. Step number two. Learn the magic words to restore respect. There is a catch. Ouch will not work very well if you've already been disrespectful yourself. I know that being respectful sounds easy enough. In the bad old days, I would have told you I was totally respectful to my man, except for how he watched too much TV, ate all that junk, he was such a slob, he didn't make enough money. In other words, I had no idea what respect looks like for a man. I didn't know that when I rolled my eyes at him, contradicted him, or told him what to do, I was sucking the oxygen out of our relationship. As much as I wanted to point the finger at him for being mean, I confess that I said horrible things to my husband to lay him low. If there's hope for an ex-rageaholic like me, there is definitely hope for you. Today, I get to show up dignified. 
but that doesn't mean I'm perfect. When I criticized his client during dinner, which was a thinly veiled attempt at trying to control his business decisions, which are really none of my business. And he's perfectly capable of handling those uh, without my two cents. I now have a magical phrase for that too. Are you ready? It's, I apologize for being disrespectful when I, and I fill in the blank. I fill in the blank with what I did, you know, and I leave out any ifs and ands or buts. Like, sorry if I hurt you, or I'm sorry, but I felt hurt when you said. That completely undoes the apology. And sure, this phrase will probably feel like sand in your mouth at first, but having the accountability and humility to clean up your side of the street is enormously empowering. It also restores the intimacy in a hurry. So cold wars, those become a thing of the past. Step number three is lead by example. So what if your husband is complaining about the messy house as if you haven't been working all day yourself, or is complaining about the way the kids are acting as if you're now falling short as a mom? It's not hard to take those complaints personally. And since you're listening to the Empowered Wife podcast, you already know that taking his bait and explaining, justifying, debating, or defending the kids or yourself will only escalate things, right? If his words are not hurtful, why not simply say, I hear you. I hear you. You're not agreeing and you're not disagreeing. You're simply listening respectfully. And that is attractive. If you're missing the deep talks you used to have, there's no better way to create the safety to bring those back than being a good listener. Or if you want to supercharge your new intimacy skills, how about appreciating something you do respect about him? Uh, Sure, it's tempting to call him out for spending too much time at work when you need help at home. What would happen if you were to nix the complaining and instead tell him how grateful you are for him working so hard and being such a good provider? Or what if you express gratitude for his unique way of showing affection? Maybe he isn't a whiz with his words, but he makes your coffee every morning with two sugars, just the way you like it. Not only will he be inspired to please you even more, he may even start expressing the appreciation you yearn for. We see that all the time. Step number four, show up as your best self. These experiments might be a stretch for you. But if you're as stressed, exhausted, or overwhelmed as I used to be, there'll be more than a stretch. They're just not going to happen. When I'm depleted, being my best self goes out the window. These days, I make it a point to do at least three self-care activities a day, like playing volleyball, having lunch with a girlfriend, napping, singing, bike riding, getting a facial, going to the bookstore for tea, When I'm filled up, I can show up as my best self. I'm not the only one either. Rita was terrified when, after 12 years of marriage, her husband became a selfish, grumpy workaholic who insisted on the house being tidy at all times, even though they had toddlers. Impossible, right? But he was too busy working to help out with the family, so Rita was stuck being responsible for everything. Any attempt to talk about it would result in a cold war for days. After a few weeks of piling on self-care, the next thing she knew, he was asking her out on a date with a shy smile. Yes, yes, yes. I felt on a high, she recalls. I was so excited about it that I couldn't stop smiling the whole evening out with him. So what self-care would fill you up, especially if you're feeling disrespected, What personal de-escalation tactics would work for you? Would it be taking a walk, meditating, or getting out on your stand-up paddleboard, maybe? For me, social self-care is a must, including surrounding myself with like-minded women who are also passionate about making their marriages playful and peaceful and intimate. And since you're still listening, that means you. Thanks for being one of those women who nourishes me with your accountability and your insights and your humor about marriage. 
I couldn't be my best self without you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Just one year into their 18 year marriage, my guest Gabby already wanted a divorce. Her husband was always cranky and blamed her for being a bad parent of their five kids, even though he was the one abusing alcohol. He lied. He flirted with female coworkers. He didn't get along with her family and he made her feel like she wanted to die. But today her marriage is exactly what she dreamed about. And she has no doubt that her husband loves her and wants to be her hero. She's going to share her secrets for creating your own loving story, even if your relationship seems hopeless. Gabby, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Laura. This is a great opportunity and I love it. Thank you. Well, tell us the whole story. Take us back to the bad old days. What were things like in your marriage? Well, yes, we are from another country. So when we were... um, deciding to live in the United States. Uh, it was really hard for me. I was pregnant of my fifth kid. And um, it was a decision basically because I wanted to follow my husband whatever he goes. So for me, it was really hard to be happy to that decision because in my country, Families are really tight and we live closer. And uh, so thinking on on going uh, to another country really far away from my house, it was a tough decision, but uh, we did it. So we came and we started a new life. I didn't speak English at all at that moment. (laughs) I just wanted to to let you know that I I was just uh, speaking like um, I, I was able to say my name. And maybe my phone number, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Actually, I struggle a lot saying even my address. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I was always scared to answer questions. And so a friend of us told me that this was a good opportunity for our marriage to get closer. But then being in here and struggling with new routines, new habits, and new people, uh, new everything almost. It was really hard on me. In my country, I used to have help at home. uh, Mm -hmm. So I don't have to do all the chores. I have someone who helped me. But in here, I have to do everything myself and take care of the five kids. So it was a lot. And one day, I was helping one of my kids to do its homework. And I have to use the only iPad that we have at that moment that my husband was using it for uh, watching some things at Netflix. So then I grabbed the iPad and was uh, I asked my husband for the password and he gave it to me. But he forgot that he had the email, no, the like his phone connected to the iPad. So I was able to see his messages from his phone. So I saw something that scares me a lot because I saw that there there was pictures of my house. I had a big mess at that moment because it was this change from, um, I can't recall, but one of the changes, like maybe from winter to spring. So there was a big mess because there was a lot of clothes that I was trying to separate and well so I found those pictures of my mess of my house sent to three different people not exactly the one that I trust the most uh one uncle of my husband and a 
cousin and someone else I can't recall right now. I think it was their parents. And I, I was so sad. I'm like, what is going on in here? He was complaining about me and about my meds that I cannot take care of the house. And he was asking for help, actually. He was saying, I I don't know what to do with this. And I'm just sick and tired. So it was like a big bowl of water pouring on my head. I'm like, okay, I can't believe this is happening. So... That catch my attention, and then I want to read more. I was always really respectful of my husband's privacy, but this time I couldn't handle it. And I was just checking, and I saw other messages. And I saw that one day that he was supposed to be at work, he was actually going out with. I don't know who he said that it was with friends. I'm not sure about that. But the thing is, at that moment, I couldn't believe anything. I was like, okay, who cares? Uh, It's a lie. I don't know. Well, a lie is a lie. So I keep going, looking on his messages, and then I get excited and look at his messenger messages as well, because I, I noticed that I could go everywhere. So I went through Facebook and I went through Messenger. But in Messenger, there was this uh, message about with, with a co-worker that he used to fly with a lot. And I never doubted about him or his behavior. But with that message about him being funny, uh, sending um, like an article about boobs to her saying like show this to your husband he probably can relate to this because she she got a she got big boobs and I was so disappointed I'm like what is going on why is he talking about boobs with another woman that it's not me (laughs) and it's a co-worker what is he thinking and she's married and she's got kids little one kids So those were big things. So since then, my trust in him was destroyed. I couldn't see him in the same way. And I've never, before that, I never uh, was like thinking that he could do something like that. Never, ever. So for me, it was a big impression, a big bad impression. So when I talked to him, Thinking, I mean, I went to tell him I saw this and I don't understand. Can you explain that to me, please? So he was so mad. So I went there trying to look for an apology from him to me. Mm -hmm. And I ended up feeling like the bad person because he was so mad saying that I broke his trust that I broke his privacy and he was just saying uh, like, how do you say that? Um, Excuses about why he sent that to that gal and why he was, he said that he was sending those pictures to ask for help to someone who knows this cousin has five kids as well. So he was, Mm -hmm. he said that he was trying to ask for her help. And to his uncle, because he trusts him and he's like really close to him, which is true. But (laughs) why is he venting our private stuff with other people? That was my my thinking. And so excuses, excuses. And then looking at I was the one he was blaming and he was really mad. So I ended up saying sorry. (laughs) Even though I was feeling so heartbroken. (laughs) So there started our, we getting apart. Then I was looking for clues about him being a narcissist. I, I, I was looking at something in YouTube. I think this, this message pop up of how to be married to a narcissist person. 
And then when this person began to talk and say all the characteristics of a narcissistic person, actually he said, a psychopath, narcissistic personality. I'm like, wow, he's describing my husband. So I'm married to a narcissistic person. Psychopath too. Apparently. Psychopath, yes. Yeah, great. And yeah. I was really decided to go with that idea. Um, I forget to tell you that he was at that moment um, drinking a lot every weekend. Since Friday to Sunday, he was drinking and drinking even beer or other things, but a lot. And I, I thought it was helpful, helpful to tell him that he was doing bad. So I was all the time remembering him. <laughs> Later, I discovered that that's not the way. But, <laughs> right. um, uh, so he was um, acting bad. He was really apart from the kids. He was not helping at all. But then re returning to the narcissistic stuff, I actually told him. I, it was, I think it was... If not last year, it was two years ago, but I asked him, I, I need you to take me to your um, psychiatrist. He was looking at one because he was depressed. So he, he was medicated and even he was medicated, he was still drinking a lot. So uh, I asked him, I need to talk to your psychiatrist. <laughs> I saw I was I, I thought I was so helpful, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the appointment, but before going to the appointment, I was looking again for the video. I was searching where was that video that and like me. And I saw some advertisement from you or something. I re remember that I was looking for the narcissistic. And I and it and it was something like how to survive to a narcissistic husband and it was from you and i'm like what is this so i was hearing and then i'm like this is another approach this is like i can actually survive so i let you apart <laughs> because i was looking for the evidence and i since i was this the video was in spanish uh -huh. so i was looking for something in english to be able to talk to the psychiatrist of my husband. And um, then I set you apart and found the words and everything. And I went to the appointment and thankfully the doctor wasn't really taking me seriously. <laughs> uh oh, He was like, I don't think he's a narcissistic, um, but probably he's really selfish or and my husband was next to me. And oh. so he was driving that to my husband. And he's like, my husband was like, yes, I am. <laughs> oh. So then I when I when we came back, since I didn't have what I wanted, that was like the doctor saying, Yes, he's a psychopath. He's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were right. Tabby. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't get that. So we had an appointment to see a counselor, actually. We were looking at another one, but that one was just saying, oh, yes, you are going through a bad stuff. Oh, yes, yes. Every single appointment, he was like, oh, that stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we were sick of that. We were like, this is not working. <laughs> so we let him. And after my husband's appointment, we find another one. This one was better because he was like, he didn't let us complain a lot from each other. But even that wasn't working as well. So then I, I went to see your video. And um, after the video, it says that I could reach to you so I, I wrote an email and I was having those emails from you and then I was with the first one and I'm like okay so I need to be vulnerable I need to be and I'm like oh she's crazy 
I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. (laughs) So even when I was subscribed to your emails and I was receiving them all the time, I was like, I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. But then last year, we were going to Chicago to our appointment. And I was looking to something to hear. And ta-da, Laura Doyle appeared again. (laughs) I was stalking you, it sounds like. Yes. (laughs) So I found your podcast. And I was amazed. I, I saw that, I mean, I don't remember which one of the episodes was the one that I heard first. But it was for me. It was for me. And I'm like, really? Am I doing this so bad? (laughs) Am I the problem here? (sighs) So I started to listen to your podcast and I went one by one from one to even the one of last term. Uh, Tuesday uh, and I have been so amazed of how it's all my fault actually it was an eye-opener incredibly touching and and I can't thank you enough because well I we went there and since it's a long road it's a lot of hours. So I was listening to one podcast and I want to hear the next one. And and I was actually not sitting next to my husband. He was driving. And I told my daughter, because at that moment we were not even talking. We, we had a cold war for about six months. So I was going to that trip, but I wasn't going to be sitting next to him. I didn't want to. And actually, I didn't want to go because I didn't want to still live with my husband. I wanted to go back to my country and I I was looking for that. So that was a trip. That was a trip. <laughs> so I was listening and I was in the back seat and I was thinking, oh, really, there's still something to do about my marriage is not all lost I have been married to this man for 18 years and my dream since I was a little girl was to be married and to have kids and to be happy and to and I imagine myself like going when I'm older woman uh grabbing my husband's hand and walking with next to him and love each other and respect each other and and be our lives one to another, right? So since I wasn't living that, I wasn't living that since the first year of my marriage. It was crazy. We were just married and I was actually crying in the in the room next to my like the main room I was crying on my knees asking God for help I was like this is this can be possible we have just one year of being married and we can't get along he's so mad always he's so cranky he's so like he's always in a bad mood and I was crying and then my my brother helped us and then again again it was like a roller coaster. We were good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. And it was so tired, so tired. And when we were really bad, um, this happened. This was awful. We had a fight. He was drinking a lot that day. And he he was on first on the kitchen and then he moved to our room. And I don't remember what was the issue, but the thing is, I came to discuss something with him. And I thought it was a good moment. (laughs) Obviously, it wasn't. 
he began to say things, really mean things about my family. He started with my father, which I really love. Mm -hmm. uh, and he started saying things about my father. And he's like, oh, well, you love your dad. And your dad does this and this and this to your mom. So why don't you love me? I'm doing the same stuff. I'm not washing the dishes. I'm not helping with the kids. And I'm drinking a lot as well as your dad. So you're supposed to love me because you love your dad. He never uses loud voice. But that day he was really loud. So I was scared of my kids listening to those words. And then he started with my mom, which I love as well. And he was saying bad things about my mom and saying that I look like her and like I'm going to become and that we, as my, my parents, doesn't get along well. They have been married 58 years and they are always complaining to each other. So for me, that was painful to hear my husband saying, like, we are going to end up being the same. like. We are going to end up same as your parents, like not getting along and insulting each other. And this is our future. And he knows that I'm always scared of that. I, I have been always scared of ended up with that kind of relationship. So that was painful for me. But then he started saying things about one one of my cousins, she looks really like me. She, we are, they, they joke about our, us being twins. And she's beautiful. She's like, um, like right now she's young and her body is really pretty. So I, and I was feeling bad because with five pregnancies, you can yeah. tell I'm, I'm a little bit chubby and <laughs> out of shape. So I was really not, um, I had my, my steam low, low steam. I don't know how to say that, but I wasn't feeling really confident on my body. So he started to say, why don't you invite your cousin? I don't, I'm not going to say her name, but why don't you invite her your cousin here and maybe I could flirt on her and maybe she could respond to me right oh my goodness that was and since he was talking loud and I didn't want my kids to hear that I was telling him just shut your mouth don't talk like that stop it and he kept going and say really hurtful things so I lost it and this this is embarrassing but I slapped his face and I was like stop 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 please stop and I was desperate and I slapped him on his face wow that was bad so I don't know how he controlled himself because I could tell that he was really angry and he, um, he told me, you know what? I think I'm going to kill myself so you can live, so you can live your life and be happy. And I was so mad and so disappointed and so heartbroken that I just second what he said. And you know what? I told him, you know what? I think I'm going to do it so you can live your life in the United States when you want to be. You love United States. You want to be here. And I don't want to be here. And I'm just uh, like a rock in your path. I'm going to get away your path. I'm going to get away. And I'm going to take your kids too. And disappear. Because at that moment, I thought that he didn't like my kids. When we were having our fourth kid, he told me, I think I never should have done this because I never wanted to have kids. Mm -hmm. I started to have kids because I just wanted to live with you. I don't want any kids. And we were on our four kids. Four kids. And I was pregnant. And he told me that. And I was like, what? What am I going to do with this? How can I deal with this? Why did you lie to me? Why? 
and he he was like i'm sorry i lied to you i just wanted to be with you uh, i love you and but just you <sighs> so at, oh, at that moment i was like I, i don't know what to do i don't know what to do yeah. i love yeah. my kids i love my kids and i can't i can't deal with this yeah. so well That day that I slapped him in the face, it it was worse actually because then I I was so scared and I was shaking of all the emotions and all the I don't know it was a mixed up of anger and and being afraid of what was going to happen that I just wanted to breathe so I thought. I'm going to go in the car and go around the neighborhood or somewhere to be able to breathe because in here I think I'm going to be crazy. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But when I was going out, I I just thought like I cannot let my kids in here with him with his emotions. If he decided to do something wrong, I don't want to expose them. And my husband wasn't like he wasn't aggressive at all, but I was thinking the worst. So I decided to take my kids with me, and that was a thing because he thought that I was going to do what I told him like yes. five minutes ago <laughs> that I was yes. going to end with my life and my kids' life. Oh. So when I was going out. Then my sister called me, what are you doing? And I'm like, what am I doing about what? Don't do anything. Call the police. And, and she was desperate. And I was like, I don't know what's going on with my sister. Why is she calling me? And then she explained. He called us and he told us that you're going to end with your life. And I'm like, And she was like, don't do anything stupid. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> But she wasn't believing me. She thought that I was really going to go and do something. Of course, they live so far from uh -huh. us. that, And she heard that, that she was desperate, thinking that I was going to do something stupid. I ended up going to a hotel because they asked me, go to a hotel. We are going to pay for it and stay there and stay safe. And then I realized that all of this was a big, big misunderstanding. I was really mad with my husband. And I later, I later in the days, because we went like this for about a week, me living in a hotel, that was crazy. But I did. And I was all the time telling him that it was his fault. Then I realized that he called my family because he was scared and he was mm -hmm. worried about me. He was truly worried about me. He wasn't trying to hurt my family. He was looking for someone who I actually hear. And he knew that it was my family who can tell me not to do that. He was really thinking that I was going to end my life. And I wasn't at all. I wasn't thinking of that. I was just, I, I just wanted to breathe. <laughs> yeah. But for him, it was a very scary moment. So this was, this was before you got the information that you have now, that you got the podcast and everything. That was before all this. All, all of this. That was my tragedy in like about two years. It was hard. It was hard to breathe. Yeah. The, the atmosphere at, at my house for two years was, you can cut it with a knife. It was so heavy for my kids. My kids were suffering silently because they were not saying things, but they were messing at school and they were like um, doing things for to catch our attention. Yes. And the tension was so hard. And I was crying like almost every weekend 
Yeah. Um, because I was feeling so bad. I was feeling like there's no hope. And because of my beliefs, I keep trying. I keep trying for 18 years because I, I feel like I have been fighting for this marriage for 18 years. Oh, and I was actually feeling like I'm going to end it up like my mom and my dad, my never getting along, always complaining of each other, never respecting. I mean, now I can see how they are fighting for their marriage too, but they haven't found find you. That's the difference. Now I feel my my marriage is so full of hope. I, I now can see. It's like... My life is the same, but I'm using new glasses. <laughs> wow. I'm going to put it this way. My husband, it's been forever a great husband, but I couldn't see. I couldn't see. I thought he was a mean person. Yeah. He was not. I complain a lot that he wasn't uh, empathetic. Yes. I yeah. thought he wasn't empathetic at all. But no, now I realize I was all over his paper. I mean, I was on his trying to control his life. I was trying to tell him how to be a husband and how to be a dad and how to be married. <laughs> now I can tell, I mean, all of our lives have changed so much. What did you start? What did you start oh, doing differently than what you had been doing once you? Oh, so many things, <laughs> but if I have to say something specific, I started relinquishing control. I, I understood, and it was so good for me. I understood that there's his life and there's my life. <laughs> And I can be the owner of my life, but I cannot control his part. And this was a big eye opener because I feel relieved. It is a relief, isn't it? To realize. <laughs> Before I felt so overwhelmed because I thought that I cannot reach all the, the, like the goals that are there because I couldn't realize that there wasn't mine. I mean, <laughs> my husband has his, his things, like he, he wants things in a way and uh, he's really clear on that. But then I realized I cannot live his life. I need to live my life. So what I learned and it's so, so good for me. It's that I can like plan my day, my life in general, not around him because I was all the time waiting for his plan. So for example, on the weekends, I was like a statue because I didn't know what to move because I was expecting him to tell me, oh, well, I'm going to do this and that and that then I can plan, <laughs> right? And I was always thinking, like, I'm not going to do anything or plan anything to let him, like, space to move around us, to, to want it to be with us. So I wasn't planning anything. And that was so bad because always I was always resentful because, of course, he never planned <laughs> on the things that I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. He right. cannot be on my brain and think, oh, she wants this or that. No. So I realized that I need to give that step forward and think of what I want to do and what I like. And it was so good because since I have my plan and I'm, uh, I feel confident and I feel happy. Then he wanted to be with me and he wanted to be with the kids. And I'm like, this is so crazy. <laughs> How can this be so easy? <laughs> All my dream of him uh, having fun with the kids 
and wanting to be with them and talking to them. Now they have these conversations and I'm delighted. I'm, I'm in my room and I can hear from here uh, what is happening on the living room. And I hear him talking with my old, oldest uh, son and they talk as friends. And I'm like, oh, this is so good. So good. I can't believe it. I never thought that this was going to happen or be a reality for us, but it is. And it's, oh, I, it makes my, my heart feel full, full of love, full of energy, mm -hmm. full of everything. I'm so happy that he's with that relationship. And this is one with one kid, but I have five. So, and he's been that way with the five of them he's always thinking what they need what they want and he's talking with them he's teasing he's making jokes and oh this is so good oh it's your dream it so is you wanted and you made it happen how do you think you did that i learned the skills from laura doyle <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually forgot to tell you that I, um, after the podcast, I, I found your book. I, I wanted actually like the, the book that you can touch, yes. but I, I couldn't reach to that one because I was scared of my husband. Seeing it. Found yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I used the one on, um, it, yes. Online. Yeah. Online, yeah. And I started to read uh, the book and I'm like, oh, this is so good. I'm going to start it with this and with that. So I started with the book and with the podcast at the same time, both. So I started implementing the skills in my life one by one, uh, little by little. But then I followed the, the Facebook group. And in there, uh, one day, someone, I don't know if, if it was you asking or the thing is uh, about the program. And I wanted to follow because it sounded so good, but I didn't have the money. And I didn't know how to express desire in that moment. I didn't mm -hmm. know about that uh, well. So I just said, I, I can't. I have five kids. I am a stay-home mom. I don't have money. I don't manage the finances at home. It's my husband always paying for things, and he's always complaining that we don't have money. So I didn't, I'm like, I can't. And I express it in the group. And then someone contacted me, and she said, like, um, I wanted to bless you, and I wanted to pay for Wow. And I was like in shock. <laughs> like, uh, really? You want to pay? And are you sure? And she paid. And I started the program, and it's been another world. I've been a good student. <laughs> I have been uh, listening to your podcast a lot, listening to the portal. Yeah. Uh, all the lessons that you have there and it's been so great and my the other women in there fighting for their marriages have helped me a lot to see that there's hope and there's happiness in improving using the skills that you teach in there so now uh, I'm gonna tell you something funny in the past I used to complain a lot about being always alone when I was doing the dishes or um, folding the, the clothes in the laundry room. And I was saying that to my husband, I thought in a nice voice, like, like a cute voice. And that, I, that was my thinking. <laughs> like, uh, you, you uh, I wish I, I could have you next to me. I don't like to be doing this stuff by myself I wish I, someone could be here talking to me so it's not that boring and well and I was saying in a different way every time like 
to see if he catches. He never catches. <laughs> <laughs> but then I decided when I was like starting with the skills and everything that I was going to listen to the podcast one and twice and three times and whatever and your lessons. So I put my headphones to wash the dishes while I was listening to you. And it's another thing. Now I'm happy doing the dishes, mm -hmm. but this is not the funny part. <laughs> the funny part is that <laughs> my husband began to come to me. He wanted to talk to me when I was doing dishes and when I was <laughs> falling in the laundry. And I was like, oh, really? Now you want to come next to me? <laughs> Now that I'm enjoying myself and my me time, now you want to come. I don't want to talk to him anymore. Yes, exactly. I'm so happy listening to this. I don't need your help at all. I don't need the company anymore. Oh, but. cute. Well, and so what is your relationship like now? Oh, I cannot be more happy. I mean, this is incredible. I feel like now I have a marriage. Now I have a partner for life. Now I think he wants to uh, grow older with me. We can talk. I mean, he's the one who talks and I listen, but I still, I'm not afraid of sharing my thoughts but i know now how to share my thoughts i have learned that it's good to listen <sighs> what i learned is that my husband loves me and he had loved me all the time and i was just looking at the i mean i i wasn't paying attention to the good stuff. I was just wanted to see the bad stuff. I was looking for clues of something that wasn't happening at all. He wasn't looking for another girl, for another woman. He, he was, he was looking at me. He, he just have eyes for me. And I was just having these crazy thoughts that were attacking my brain actually and my feelings. But I'm, now I'm free and I'm happy and I have the best marriage <laughs> I have had forever. This vision you have of the two of you growing old and holding hands, does that seem like your future now? Oh, it does. <laughs> and, Absolutely. And you, but uh, uh, what about ending up like your parents? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> No, actually, there was a moment, uh, like at the beginning, that I was thinking, well, even if I cannot fix my marriage, I, uh, I'm already another person. I'm, mm -hmm. al I'm already winning because now I see the world in a different way through a different glasses. This is different. This is absolutely different. So uh -huh. At that moment, I wasn't thinking that I could fix my marriage. It, it, se it seems like an impossible, but now I know that it's not impossible. It's actually, I mean, it, I'm, I'm still working on my skills, of course. There's always like oh. ups and downs because we tend to go back to the old person that we used to be. But it's not, it's not the same anymore i mean i'm so happy i'm so especially i'm so relieved of yes. my, i used to be heavy on my thoughts and on my my heart felt heavy everything feels like was getting apart and now i can't wait to keep living wow that's a huge difference what what about the cold war like the 6 months cold war is it does that happen still? Oh, my. <laughs> I need to tell you that I was, in that moment, I was sleeping in another room. Because I was actually believing in my lies. Because he, I used to tell that it was because he was snoring so hard that I cannot sleep. <laughs> 
and now we sleep all like <clears throat> cuddling and he touched me all the time. Like he really likes me. Like he really yeah. likes to be next to me. And that's so good. I, I just, ah, uh, it's so good. It's, it's so, good. so good. I don't feel like, because I used to feel like uh, I was awful and I was um, getting old and like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, but the picture that I had about me, it was like uh, witch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. But now I feel like I'm gorgeous and I'm confident and I'm, I'm and I feel his love. I feel like he want to be with me. He want he can he can wait to get out of work and come and see me and be with me and enjoy mm -hmm. being next to me so this is this is superpowers you and i can sleep i sleep well <laughs> i don't have any more <laughs> lies of and i was believing that lie of i cannot sleep because he's snoring so hard and he's still snoring i don't know how but I don't, <laughs> you sleep <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know i am sleeping peacefully well, this sounds like a miracle to me. Yeah, that I have is. so many, so many uh, lessons. I, I wrote in my, uh, I have a notebook and I wrote special phrases like look for evidence. But when I think of that, I used to look for evidence, but bad evidence. Now I look for good evidence of he loving me. And I found a lot every day. I mean, I used to write them down, but I'm I'm grateful. I'm saying like, oh, thanks for this and thanks for that. And it's so natural. It used to be hard to say one thanks, but now it's, I can't stop myself saying thanks for all that he does every day for us and for me especially. Mm -hmm. I think this is a brand new relationship. It's, it's like the relationship of my dreams. Oh, wow. Well, what is your tip for someone who is where you are, where you were rather, where she says, I don't think he wants to, he doesn't want to be a father. We fight. We don't talk. We're just going to end up bickering for the rest of our lives. And she wants what you have now, Gabby, where she feels so desired. She feels like uh, confident and beautiful because her husband is so loving and he's friends with the kids. She wants what you have. What, where should she start? What's your tip for her? My tip is don't lie to yourself. There's hope. Uh, and not hope. It, there's a reality. You just need to look for it. Yeah. So the part where you were hopeless, that was a lie. You're saying Is it was right? a lie. It was oh, a lie. lie. All my complaints, all the things that I was like, I was really sure that <laughs> they were bad. They were not. It was me. I was, I was with the wrong glasses. That's all. That's all. I was paying attention to the bad stuff. But when, as soon as you start to see what it's good in your life, what it's good about your husband, about your reality, and even about myself, because I started to look at me. I never look at me. I thought that, that was selfish. Huh. But as soon as I started to think what I want, what I like, that it's on me, I mean, that, that, that I could control Oh my goodness, it's, it was absolutely another reality. The reality that I really wanted is not a lie, is not something for the for for people around us, is not for people to see, is for me to live. Yes. Yes. It's not for a picture. <laughs> now that you that we are in this um this kind of life that everything is electronic and everything is like this is this is not my picture on Facebook. This is my life. I'm living this. 
I'm living this. This is not for people to see that I'm happy. This is for me to know that I'm happy. <laughs> yes. Yes. So what would you say to yourself, knowing what you know now, what, and you could go back in time and talk to Gabby before, what would you say to her? I could say, you are a good person. You are, you are a good wife, a good mom. I mean, you can be all of that. It's just, you need to, to focus on, on the positive side of your life. You need to focus on yourself. You need to focus on what you can do and enjoy life and fly, fly, <laughs> fly <laughs> and fly. Go for it. <laughs> Love that. And how has, how has this miracle in your family, how has this impacted your children? Oh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I can tell you that my kids used to be, uh, you can tell on their bodies that they were not happy. My kids were, my two oldest were so chubby and they have difficulties on their relationships with other people. Some shy and some like they don't trust on themselves, like they don't feel confident on themselves. But now they look happy. They look open. They look like they want to uh, spend time with the family because they didn't want to be like together. They were like finding what to do so they could deal with life. Now they look relieved. You can see on their faces. They are happy to see that mom and dad are happy, that they, the mom and dad are respectful to each other. They like, they love to see us laughing and uh, they are not needy. They used to feel, they used to look like they need to, to show some uh, like rebel or something like that to get our attention. They don't look like that anymore. They don't look needy. They, they look like they want to enjoy time with us. So they're like, why don't we go for a walk? And so when we go and go for a walk and all as a family, they are, they look happy. They look, they are full of love that they could conquer the world. They look confident. And my two chubby kids are actually now thin. They look so good. Um, they Amazing. have changed a lot. In in less than a year, it's been a whole new world. Wow. They help at home. They wanna we used to be late for school every day. That was crazy. Every day, every day, every day, late for school. I was yelling, I was complaining, I was mad, I was angry. Now all of them help. All of them get themselves ready to go to school. We are never late. They even prepare their, their stuff, like if they want to have lunch for school or or something special, they prepare themselves. <laughs> and my youngest have six years old, and she does that. And she's ready. And wow. all of them are ready. And they help each other. I, I don't know. <laughs> this, so is this, so good. this is a miracle that has impacted your whole family for the better. And you've really created. Uh, this this marriage of your dreams, this family of your dreams. And uh, Gabby, it's a very inspiring story. I'm so pleased that you came on and shared with us so vulnerably about how you did this. I think you're inspiring other women who are listening like you once did to the podcast and thinking, I can do this. I can fix my marriage. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. You have... Uh, like you, you are part of this miracle without you and your lessons. Uh, I I couldn't be here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thousand thank yous. 
And I'm so happy to be able to be part of this. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much. I'm sure you're, you will have the opportunity to touch other women's lives too. You're already doing it. So thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. And now it's time for the worst relationship advice of the week award. It's the worst relationship advice of the worst relationship advice. Yeah, it's the worst relationship advice of the worst relationship advice of the week. The advice that I find most half baked this week is from an article called Do You Want to Have an Honest Relationship? then you have to be willing to say and hear things you don't like. So right there, I was so curious. What awful things do I have to say and hear to have an honest relationship? The author says that you have to, quote, confront your husband about how his reactions make it difficult for you to be honest with him and also difficult for you to feel close to him. In other words, if you criticize him for criticizing you, and you blame him for blaming you, then you'll have an honest relationship. That will apparently make him less critical and blamey and make it easier for you to tell the truth and feel close. Only that has never been my experience, not once. And I tried that approach uh, to being honest lots of times. And based on what I've heard from thousands of wives all over the world, It didn't work for them either. But this sure is a persistent myth. I hear it a lot. And looking back, I noticed that I was confused about the difference between being honest and being critical. I was honest about my negative thoughts about him, and that caused a lot of hurt and conflict. There was nothing very courageous or accountable or heroic about complaining about him. But that's what I thought of as being honest. What I hadn't learned yet was to be honest about myself, my feelings and my desires, which that does take some courage and accountability. You know, that part where I'm tuned into myself is where I find such inner strength. And that's where my dignity lives, which helps me connect with my husband, no matter what the challenge is. These days, I think of being honest as being authentic and being vulnerable by knowing what's happening with me and talking about it without blame or criticism. If I'm having a conversation with my husband or with anyone else whose reactions are making it difficult for me to be honest, it's probably because I feel hurt or scared or embarrassed. And for me, being honest means communicating what's going on with me instead of pointing my pointy finger at him and what he's doing wrong. So instead of confronting or blaming. Now I like to stay with myself and think about what's happening in my world at that very moment, what I need most. If I was hurt, well, then an ouch might be just the thing, right? If I feel embarrassed, I, I'd try to be honest about that by saying so. I feel so embarrassed. That's what I think of as having an honest relationship, one where I'm vulnerable. If I was feeling scared, I'd try to figure out what I was afraid of. And maybe I would say that part. And the magic of being honest in that way by staying with myself, staying on my paper, even when I'm a mess, is that it invokes a sacred trust that my husband responds to so well. Every time, even if what I did was annoying or careless or expensive, when he sees me vulnerable and accountable, he wants to comfort me. He wants to be my hero. And that is the kind of relationship and the kind of connection that having experienced it, I can no longer imagine going without it. 
My husband responds to that kind of honesty in a way he never did when I was using the word honest as an excuse for criticism and blame. And for that reason, the advice to, quote, confront your husband about how his reactions make it difficult for you to be honest with him and also difficult for you to feel close to him is the very worst relationship advice I've heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, we'll talk about three ways to solve a passive aggressive husband problem. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I know I should do that update to my phone, but then I wouldn't be able to look at it for like 20 minutes.